2 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8. More than any other New Testament text, this has been used as a basis for a blessed hope in heaven immediately after death. Even the literary context of these verses in 2 Corinthians seems to support what we might call an otherworldly orientation. In an extended discussion stretching from 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 5, 10 as a literary unit, Paul appears to contrast body and life in the present with a heavenly eternal future. And at the end of chapter 4, that's not me, right? Unless there's something, a spirit in the body, I don't know. Um, at the end of chapter 4, Paul speaks of our outer nature wasting away, while our inner nature is being renewed in, chapter, in verse 16. And he contrasts in verse 18 what is seen and transitory with what is unseen and eternal. So it makes perfect sense then that in chapter 5, Paul would say, so we're always confident, even though we know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we'd rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Now, have I just got myself into a bit of a jam here? Because what does Paul clearly say? He seems to emphasize a non-earthly, non-embodied future with Christ. Doesn't he say he'd prefer to be at home with the Lord, presumably in heaven, than in his present body on earth? Doesn't this clearly teach the hope of heaven that begins immediately at death when we're separated from our bodies? No. First thing we should note is that Paul has already stated in the first four verses of chapter 5 that his actual hope is for what he calls a heavenly dwelling that God has prepared for him. That's a resurrection body. That's a non-controversial interpretation. All the commentators accept that. Speaking of the contrast between the present body and the resurrection body, Paul says, for we know that if this earthly tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed we've taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we're still in this tent, we groan under our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. And he who's prepared us for this very thing is God, who's given us the spirit as a guarantee. So using the metaphor of a body, the body as a house or dwelling, Paul, as a good Jew, says that he doesn't want to be naked or unclothed, that is disembodied in the eschaton, but rather to be clothed with a new resurrection body, a building or dwelling prepared by God, hence not made with hands. While the resurrection is future, Pauline theology affirms that if we have died with Christ, we have been raised with him already. We participate in the resurrection. And part of the grounding for that is that Paul affirms that we already have, in some sense, the hope for building or dwelling in the heavens. We have that already. It is guaranteed, and it's being made or prepared by God. This language of what, something being prepared in heaven to be manifest on earth at the last day is part of a pervasive pattern in the New Testament that I have addressed in a subsection of my book, A New Heaven and New Earth. This is just a chart from the book. You may not be able to see it here. But among the things that the New Testament says are being prepared or reserved or kept for us in heaven to be revealed at the last day are a kingdom, an inheritance, or salvation, a hope, a dwelling or house equivalent to our new body, a place with many rooms, or a citizenship, a homeland or country, and a city, even the New Jerusalem. But what is prepared for us does not mean we will go there to enjoy them. And N.T. Wright uses the example of a father telling a son that I've got a lot of presents for you for Christmas. They're up in the cupboard. When Christmas comes, you don't have to go in the cupboard and play with them. I'll bring them out and give them to you in the living room. So the preparation in heaven is a pattern that guarantees that the future is in God's hands, but it's going to be manifest on the last day revealed, unveiled. It's an apocalyptic pattern. So Paul's hope of the resurrection is clear from verses 1 to 4. Our new bodies are being prepared by none other than God himself. And yet Paul also says he prefers to be away from the present body and at home with the Lord, presumably in heaven. So could it be that Paul has contradictory hopes? Does Paul long for the resurrection while shunning a disembodied state, being naked or unclothed? but also prefer a disembodied state to the present life of the mortal body. 
Perhaps he has a hierarchy. The resurrected body, then a disembodied state in heaven, and then the present earthly body. But this way of reading Paul ignores what he said earlier in the previous chapter. And remember, chapter divisions are artificial constructs people put into the letters of Paul. It was originally a continuous letter. So near the end of chapter 4, Paul explains the basis of his hope, why he's not driven to despair in his tribulations and sufferings. And the reason Paul says he can faithfully live in the midst of suffering is that we know that the one who has raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Notice, there is no separation here of resurrection and being in the presence of God with Christ. Not only does Paul look forward to the resurrection, but he conceives of being in a resurrected, embodied state in the Lord's presence. So being in the presence of the Lord in 414 is, if we read contextually, equivalent to being at home with the Lord in 5.8. There is no convincing reason to re separate the latter statement from Paul's hope of resurrection, except that we are habituated to read the text that way, and we ignore the previous chapter. In context, Paul is not speaking about being with Christ immediately after death. Rather, he's looking to the second coming, at which time we will be raised and be with Christ in the new creation. So a plain reading of this text in context suggests that being at home with the Lord is nothing other than Paul's expectation that we will dwell with Christ in the new creation. So it's not at all clear to me that this passage teaches an intermediate disembodied state as any part of Christian hope. 